So we're here today to build a battery, and we're building a wet cell battery. And if you read on page 18, you saw that there's two different types of batteries, wet cell and dry cell. And I brought with me here, for demonstration purposes, a dry cell battery, and this is the typical battery you would get and purchase if you're going to use a flashlight, remote control car, or anything like that. So we're going to test to make sure that, that this battery is working. We also just want to see that this light lights up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just apply metal to metal on this side of the positive charge and metal to metal on the negative, and we're going to make a closed circuit. And did it light up? Yeah. It sure did. Now, if it didn't light up, what, what could we think? What are some of the things we would think? Well, some of them would be that maybe we don't have a good connection. That's really important. Uh, maybe we've run out of uh, power in our battery. And then lastly, we would then look and make sure that the light bulb actually works. But in this case, everything works. So for this demonstration, and if you're watching this online, you would see, in order to make a battery, we need the following pieces. We need zinc. We also need copper. And these represent the negative and positive sides of it. We also want to have some sort of separation. So in some cases, we'd use a blotter paper but I'm just going to use some of this. And all we want to be able to do is just separate the two metals from each other. But we want to make sure that they're also interconnected so that we can use them as well. And because this is a dry cell battery, it uses a paste. But for our wet cell battery, we're using co copper sulfate, so it's a liquid. And this is the kind of thing that you'd see in your car battery if you had an opportunity to use it, or even if you had a, let me think here, like a lawnmower. Uh, rider lawnmower, they use the wet cell batteries too. So we're going to bend these this way and we're going to make connections. We're actually going to connect it with some tape. So this is a makeshift battery and so we're going to connect these pieces here because we just don't want things flopping all over the place and we want to be able to have solid connections. So I'm just using some masking tape to put them together. And this is all found in our book as well so you can use page 14 and 15 to walk us through. So we're actually going to be creating this battery. So the next thing we're going to do is we've got this put together, and now we've got to make sure our connections are correct. Remember we said that? So I'm going to connect our negative and positive by using little pieces of tape here. And I want to make sure that my metal to metal is, is very well set. So I'm pushing really hard on that. Do you see that? So I'm making sure that my metal is touching my metal. And I'm going to do the same thing with this side because I'm creating a closed circuit. And remember we said if it doesn't light up, it's because either our circuit doesn't work or we don't have enough power. Usually it's not because the light bulb isn't working. So usually when there's a problem with electricity, we check all of our steps. You shouldn't be checking electricity steps, but the electrician would be. And so I've made two, I've made sure that it's connected really well. You see these two pieces here? And now we've created our battery. Now this isn't the battery yet because what we need to do is drop it in the copper sulfate. And this is our electrolyte. The electrolyte is going to corrode the zinc and the chemical reaction of the corrosion is going to send power through our connection to this side and we'll know that power is taking place because the light bulb will light up. So the light bulb has nothing to do with the battery. It just indicates that there is power taking place. So we're creating potential energy by having stored energy work together. So we're using stored energy, which is potential and creating kinetic. So we're going to put it into our electrolyte, and then we'll see if it lights up. Ready? Here we go. And do you see it light up? Yeah. So what's happening is our electrolyte has allowed a chemical reaction to take place in the metals. It's running through the circuit. Everything was tight. And if we had even more powerful solution, we'd have a more powerful light kind of like when we use the dry cell battery.